welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over some car sales closing techniques. This one specifically is called the validation close. This is the validation close. So let's write this up top. Validation close. Excuse my handwriting. I should have been a doctor in a past life. This is actually our first marker board video, so I'm kind of excited about that. Validation close. So I'm going to set the table for you. Let's say we have a customer who says, um, hypothetically, you're looking at, let's say we're looking at, first off, a 2017 Nissan Rogue. Okay, we're looking at a 2017 Nissan Rogue. That's the vehicle your customer wants to drive home today. And let's say the sale price on that vehicle is $22,000 and there's 45,000 miles on the vehicle. All right, so we have a 17 Rogue, 22 grand, 45K on the clock. Customer says to you, and so what's the best you can do for me on the road? I typically would like to do this while sitting down and negotiating the deal. Not so much on the lot, but if we're sitting down negotiating, we dove into the numbers, we presented the pencil. At this point, I have a stack of white Xerox paper because I'm very visual in my explaining of either the deal structure or doing my closing or overcoming objections. I write everything down. I feel like it adds another layer of validity, no pun intended, to your clothes. It just makes it more real, and most people are visual learners. So you want to write this down. So I'm going to write this down on a piece of paper as I'm negotiating the deal. So I would say to them, um, so Ant, let's say hypothetically it was me, right? Ant, the best we can actually do on the Rogue would be the $22,000 sale price on this vehicle, but then I'm going to go into my clothes, the validation clothes. I'm going to say, but let me ask you this. What if I was able to find you a 2016, let's say 55,000 miles on the vehicle for only $19,000? Or what if I was able to find you a 2018 with only 35,000 miles on the vehicle for, say, only $25,000? All right, so let's kind of think of what happened here. They were looking at the 2017 Rogue, 45,000 miles, price point of 22 grand. You would if then, you said, what if I was able to find you a vehicle a year older, right? I didn't specify the Rogue per se, but let's say I was able to find you a 2016, a year older, with only 55,000 miles on the vehicle for, say, 19 grand, or 2018, right? You're newer, right? You went year older or 2018 year newer with only 35,000 miles on the vehicle for only 25 grand. So what I did was I went year older, $3,000 less, roughly 10,000 more miles. You can make it 15,000 more miles. You can go $2,000. You can go $2,000 less. You don't have to go three, but that's what I did. Whatever you do when you go to the year older, you have to do the same difference on the year newer. So then I went up $3,000 more in price rather than $3,000 less, a year newer, and 10,000 less miles. Once again, this is the validation close. What I'm doing is I'm not trying to switch vehicle. I'm not trying to switch them to a car that's older or a car that's newer. I want them to stay on this car. I'm validating the price of this vehicle by asking them hypothetically, what if I could show you one a year older, right? or want a year newer, $3,000 less, $3,000 more. What that is doing is it's validating the price of the vehicle we're on. And when they see it side by side, it starts to make sense, right? It starts to make sense. They can visually see, oh, okay. So I guess that is the best deal they can give me on the 17 because the 16 that's a year older with 10,000 more miles is $3,000 less. And the 18 that's a year newer with 10,000 less miles is $3,000 more. The thing is, these cars don't have to exist. You really don't even want them to say, yeah, I'd rather look at that 2016. You just want to validate the price of the 17. If they were to say, let's just say hypothetically, I want to look at the 2016, um, I'd rather look at the one $3,000 less. I'm going to address and redirect. That's a technique you'll hear me say in pretty much every closing scenario. I'll address and redirect, but I want to find out why. So I would say, so Ant, 
you want to look at the one three years older. Is that because you, you don't really care too much about the mileage or you're not really too concerned with the age of the vehicle or the warranty coverage? Or are you just trying to look at something less expensive? They're going to most likely say, well, I'm looking, I want to look for something less expensive. I'll address their concern on sale price and redirect back to payment because the reality of it is, I don't want to get them off this car. The value is built in this car. Lowering price does not increase value. It just lowers price. Once I bring it back outside, land on this car, if it even exists, if even one exists like this, right? This is hypothetical. This is not even knowing if that vehicle is in stock. It doesn't have to be for the sake of the clothes because you want to land on this car anyway. You want to stay on this car. You're validating that price. But if I switch on this, I got to bring them outside. I got to go through the whole thing again. They're timing out. So I want to stay on this car. So if he says he'd rather go with something less expensive, I would say to him, okay, totally understand. Now, when you say less expensive, are you just kind of calculating that the less expensive car would warrant a lower payment? And I'm shaking my head. He's going to say yes, right? He's going to say yes. And I'll say, let me ask you this. What if we could somehow find a way to bridge the gap, right? Find a way to bridge the gap. That's a word track that I like to use. And find a way to reach your payment goal. I don't say a number. Your payment goal on the 2017. Would you be more inclined to want to go with the 2017 if the numbers made sense as opposed to going with the 2016? They're going to say yes. They're, they're, they're going to this car because it's less money. In most cases, they're going to say no to this anyway. They're probably going to say no to this at an even higher rate. There will be a situation though where they may say, well, hey, you know, I'm spending the money. I'd rather go with a newer one. So at that point, now you may have another trick up your sleeve. If it's a pre-owned vehicle, you may be able to switch them to leasing a new vehicle. Or if they say they'd rather get a little more bang for their buck, maybe, maybe there's not enough value built in this vehicle. Maybe this vehicle, the newer one, has technology that they need. Maybe they, they're really concerned about the mileage, right? Maybe they'd rather have the newer one. Let's just say hypothetically if that's a newer body style. So you have to kind of feel your way through that. But the validation close, the goal of that and sorry, I destroyed the marker board. It's my first video on the marker board. The validation close, the goal of that is to validate the $22,000 price point on the 2017 by showing them, in comparison, a vehicle that's older, $3,000 less, you could make that $2,000 less. Whatever, whatever gap you want to create for the older one, just make sure you do the same thing for the newer one. Whatever difference in miles you want to do for the older one, make sure you do the same thing for the newer one. So... 17, $22,000 price point, 45,000 miles. You go 16, $3,000 less, 10,000 more miles. 18, $3,000 more, 10,000 less miles. So that's the validation close. The goal is to validate the price of this vehicle by showing them a comparison of something older and something newer. Hey, my friend, thank you for watching. If you want to see videos just like this one, please. Like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate the love and support. And don't forget, leave some comments down below. I'm looking forward to all of your interaction and feedback. And I can't wait to bring you more videos just like this one. Thanks again. I'll talk to you soon.